Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Y2K. My name is Blake and today we are going to be uh, talking about my 11 year ownership with this 2011 BMW M3 competition package. So let's start it up. And we'll make our way out to residential areas as always from the boat yard and then head on to the highway for a little bit of higher speed action. And always select traction control off in this car because why would you want to drive it any other way? Uh, it's also got way too much power to leave that on and it's borderline dangerous to do that because you might try to pull out in traffic and it just completely cuts the power. <laughs> Alright, exited the gravel, a little bit of safari mode action. Definitely not what this car is about. And we'll head out, kind of get her warmed up a little bit, and make our way to the highway. First, some beautiful views. It's Florida in the summer. It doesn't get much better besides just being really hot and humid. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is my 2011 M3 competition. It's not really a competition anymore because I have changed everything. A little background on this car. Uh, well, just my M3 story, I should call it my M3 story. So, in high school, uh, the E46 M3 was the car to have. Um, I really wanted one. My parents definitely were not going to buy me an E46 M3, and, and I didn't have a lucrative enough career at that point. Uh, we didn't have YouTube careers or digital careers <laughs> when I was going to high school in the early 2000s. Um, but I really wanted an E46 M3 and I definitely went to the dealership and looked at them. Um, I thought the SMG shifter looked really cool even though uh, I know the manual is definitely the one I have. I would not be uh, getting an SMG unless I converted it. So that aside, always wanted one. Then I got to college around 2006 and uh, this thing came out, the E92. Hold up, we got the only turn in Florida right here. The only turn. <laughs> Sad to say, but pretty much is the only turn around here. Um, so this came out and it had a V8. And when I saw that, because the old one made like 333 horsepower, but this V8 was 414. That is a huge increase, especially when we're talking about naturally aspirated engines. Um, you know, but they added two cylinders, and, and the V10 was also uh, from the M5, the same engine, which might uh, added two more cylinders, but they, they took them off for the M3. I think this actually sounds better than the V10. You might think I'm wrong, but that's, that's what I think. So, uh, but, you know, they put in a four liter V8 that revs to 8250, and um, I grew up driving 911s, but when I saw this came out, it, it was just as fast or a little faster than a Carrera S. I think maybe it was about dead even, but a lot less money. And I just said, this is this is the car to have. Um, I was in college. I definitely could not, you know, afford anything besides uh, the dollar menu at McDonald's. I was working my way through school. Uh, you know, I, I was going to school 30, uh, well, I was going, working 30 hours a week <laughs> and, and going to this college at the same time uh, with a pretty decent course load. So didn't have time to make money, but I did work at a cool uh, tuner shop that was like Fast and Furious-esque and, and that was a good experience. So, um, but one day I was uh, home for the, the weekend with my girlfriend, who is now my wife, and we saw like that blue purple color E92 M3. It was some younger kids. Uh, it was probably, you know, their dad bought it for them or whatever, but they were in one of these and they were getting on it. And I just remember being so envious uh, that they were had a brand new E92 M3. And that, that moment really left a mark on me to just say, I'm going to buy one of these one day. Um, when I graduated school, I started doing real estate uh, with my family and the first kind of car that I really bought on my own was a 135i in 2011 and I did all the the bolt-on mods you could do to that. It was a great car. It wasn't sport package which I later learned was a big mistake because you could not take the speed limiter off back then. Um, they didn't have the reflash for it just yet and 
when Cobb did come out with one, the JB4 was just so much faster that uh, I didn't see the point in switching. So yeah, I did it, get the Cobb tuned. There's actually a couple Cobbs right here. I was going to give it wide open, but that will no longer happen. I have to listen to it at medium throttle. <laughs> so, uh, love the 135, but it was not an M3. And the time had come where I'd had the 135 for a couple of years. And I said, I've just got to get an M3. So I started looking. And uh, I kind of thought I was going to have to get like an 08, you know, like a pre facelift, L not, not an LCI like this. Um, but. I then found some creative financing options, as I usually would do back then, <laughs> um, and I was able to get this, a 2011 competition package with every possible option. I almost bought a uh, no hump, what they call it, no nav, cloth, speed, sport cloth or speed cloth uh, interior, white E92, brand new, almost leased one. But back then, I really, I'd never had a car with the navigation. I always didn't get that. So, oh, here we go. I guess someone got pulled over. Not a good day to speed. Um, so, at that point, that car now would be worth a good amount of money. Definitely compared to this, but this is what I wanted. Uh, I wanted all the bells and whistles. It was going to be my daily driver. It was my only car um, at the time. My wife had an X5 uh, Sport package, like a 4.8 2007 and I wanted to have an M3. So, um, when I was able to buy this car, that I remember the day I bought it, it was like I had bought a LaFerrari or something, or, or like my Diablo. Um, it was a huge, huge uh, accomplishment, and I had worked really hard uh, with an event company I started that did half mile racing, and uh, we had gotten to the point where I could finally buy a car that I'd always wanted, and I did it on my own. Um, so, you know, we went to pick it up, it was really exciting. I love this color. It's uh, Jerez Black, which is like a blue black. And the pictures, it looked black, and I got there, and it was like a dark blue. Um, even has like a little purpley kind of. Just depends on like if you're. I think if you wear polarized sunglasses, it kind of pulls out different colors, which are maybe organic. What the, the organic colors? What it is? But anyways, um, I put on my favorite song. I remember and move for me. Which of those of you remember like the old. EDM techno days. Um, I just always loved uh, this car with that music. It was just the vibe I was going for. <laughs> um, so I drove it for a year uh, stock, or maybe a little over, and because it was my only car. Then I got a truck and uh, to tow a trailer for our event business, and I didn't need to drive this every day anymore. And the truck was, you know, overall just more uh, practical for everyday use. So this got put into the weekend car category. And let's give it a little, why not? Ooh, it feels good. It's supercharged by the way, we're gonna get to that. That's why it, it sounds so good. Um, so, I then decided to modify it, of course. I did some work wheels, some Brombachers, they were gold. Had the two-step lip. Kind of throwing back to my JDM days when I had some uh, had an Acura RSX and a G35 before that. I was really into all the JDM stuff back then. Still love it, but uh, you know things have moved on. I kind of prefer the Euro and Italian stuff now. Um, so I put those wheels on it. I did all the bolt-ons, like you know test pipe. Uh, well, maybe the secondary catenary, I think, is what it was. And like an Iceman race or the Sport exhaust, um, some KWV3s, and uh, a tune. And it revved to like 8600. That was the best uh, sounding car I've heard. You know, uh, it's up there with like the top 10 cars I've ever heard. It. The induction noise and everything was just incredible. Um, so I had that for a while. And then I was going to trade it for an R35 GTR back in the day probably 2015 or 16, probably, yeah, 2015. But I decided to supercharge this instead because uh, I just love this car. And um, so I did, I put an ESS 625 on it. I later upgraded that to a 650. I did a Turner Motorsports rear differential. And this car is, uh, it's just been incredible. So I did some like solid subframe bushings. I did a Delrin bushings for the diff, which were kind of annoying at first, but now I kind of like the sound. It does, it's a little howly, <laughs> so to speak. 
Um, I'm gonna flip around here so we can actually show a little performance. That's probably what most of you came here to see, is some performance. That guy just decided to really go at the last second. I don't know why people do that. All right, a little power. Wow, that guy just completely pulled out. But we got great brakes. A little bit of a demonstration of the S650 uh, powertrain. <laughs> so when I did the supercharger, um, I also added a 50 shot of nitrous. <laughs> Which isn't real common to do on these cars, but my buddy had a 2015 Viper, which he bought brand new, and he even got the $15,000 coupon for his Viper. Um, which I, uh, we had somebody that sponsored one of our races, and the guy said, I got these coupons laying around, so I need one. And I said, Actually, I know somebody that does. So that was cool. He got a, I think he paid 60 grand for that thing right now, which is absolutely insane. Those cars are worth a lot more than that now. We got a call coming in. Um, so, I uh, did that, hoping to maybe beat him. I did not beat him at the half mile race, but it's a really cool story, and I don't use the nitrous kit anymore, because that actually was when it was a 625. When I went to 650, I didn't need the nitrous anymore. Um, I didn't want to chance anything and overdo it, but uh, it's still on here, and I can put the bottle back in if I wanted to. <laughs> but, um, so this car has 80, almost 83,000 miles on it. And I just love this car. I think they're gonna go down as a very, you know, one of the classic BMWs of all time. Um, I prefer it over the E46 because of the V8, and they're not, I don't see any way they will ever put a V8 in an M3 ever again. Um, if they did, maybe it would be like the V8 twin turbo from an M5 or something, which um, I just would much rather have this four liter that revs to the moon. And with a supercharger, it's, you know, it's just as fast as most kind of normal supercars like a Gallardo, maybe like a stock Huracan, it, would, it could hang with. It's like a M4 with bolt-ons, it's about the same speed. Um, it's faster than like a GT350, uh, like a stock one that can beat that. Uh, so it's it's got like the performance of a, a respectable supercar with the practicality of a 3 Series and it's just the best of all worlds, you know? And I've just really loved it that I've got an Acropovic exhaust on it. It makes it sound just insane. And I just, uh, I don't know uh, if I would ever even consider selling it because I just love it that much. I've never had a car this long. 11 years is like forever uh, to me. And, but it's become, become, it's become like a family heirloom, you know? Uh, and my wife, she she really loves it. She doesn't ride it a lot, but we just had a lot of good memories, uh, you know, racing this thing and the half mile events, and and that's probably why we've kept her old X5 around, even though she got that new Lexus GX550. It's just sentimental. We we called ourselves M and M because she had the X5M and I had this, and those uh, you know were cars that we'd always wanted. And she's got the E70, so same generation car. I drive everything like that, and, and they really do look great next to each other. So I need to get a bigger garage because these cars have been sitting outside and. There's spider webs on them and stuff. I'm not real happy about that. But that's my M3 story. It's a, it's a beautiful day. And I figured, why not tell an M3 story today? Uh, I hope you enjoyed listening to uh, me ramble on about this car that I love so much. It is a six-speed. In my opinion, uh, it's the only way to go with an M car. Unless it's like a brand new one, because I think those are just kind of too digital. Maybe the automatic's better, but and these ones got to have the stick. Um, so, if you liked what you saw on the channel today, subscribe, like, all the things every other YouTuber tells you to do. I really don't like to ask, but uh, I have to. <laughs> I have to, so YouTube shows uh, this channel on the home screen or whatever it is they do with their algorithm. Um, I hope you have an amazing weekend and happy early 4th of July to everyone uh, in the event I don't upload again before then. Um, so, I think the next video coming up is actually going to be a, a newer car, uh, a couple Toyotas versus each other, maybe a, a Land Cruiser versus a Land Cruiser, an old one versus, well, 
the Heritage versus the uh, the new Land Cruiser because I've got the 21 Heritage. So if you're interested in Toyota stuff, that's probably going to be the next video. Um, so have a great weekend, and we will see you on the next upload. Bye-bye.